today I'm going to be showing you how we can use community-made MCP servers on the cloud version of an ADEN, just like we could on the self-hosted version of an ADEN. Now, if you don't know what I mean by this, just keep watching. I'm going to explain this entire thing, and then I'm going to explain how we can get access to those community-made MCP servers. So we first need to understand the importance of MCPs and the difference between them between the cloud version and the self-hosted version. So in the cloud version here, I have an AI agent with access to different tools to manage my Gmail account. Now you can see I have six different tools listed out here. I went through and set all of these up individually when making this. Now that is a little bit time consuming and with six tools it's not terrible, but you can imagine the more tools, the more time it's gonna take. So on the self-hosted version, this is what the same agent looks like. You can see we just have two tools here and they're even easier to set up. Now currently on the self-hosted version there are github pages like this one containing lists of the MCP servers that are made by the community. Now currently I'm not going to get into the specifics of why they are not available just because it's a little bit technical but currently we cannot access these same MCP servers on the cloud version. It's only available on the self-hosted version. Now, what these allow us to do is if I open up an Airbnb server here, you simply connect to it using this list of commands. Now that looks like this. So if I open up this tool here, the client, I can add a credential and you can see the command so there's no other setup we need to do besides just entering these two different fields here. You click save, and then that gives you access to the Airbnb server. Now that is very easy to set up and to start using that server. Instead of individually creating all the tools, finding all the documentation and things like that. However, these are the current nodes available to us on the cloud version. So you can see we have the MCP client here. And this client, we just enter an SSE endpoint, which has to be one of these MCP servers here. So you can see when I open up the server, I can copy the MCP URL. So I'll copy the production URL, and then I can go over to this client here, and I just paste that in here. So now this agent has access to all of the tools on this MCP server through the client tool here. So if I were to add Gmail tools onto the MCP server, this agent can now access these tools through the client which accesses this server. Now you might be wondering, why don't we just connect this to the agent here and just skip the, MP, uh, the MCP server entirely? And you very well could do that one thing it allows us to do is we can only we can just keep referencing the MCP server here if we need access to these tools again. Now you could very well do that for this agent as well. So you could just set up all of the tools to this agent and then just call this from another workflow. So you very well could do something like this and have this agent called from another workflow which has access to the tools and so therefore you don't need to set it up again you can just call it over and over again inside of other agents or other workflows etc now one benefit to using the M mcp servers over just repeatedly calling an agent is that these agents are actually using this chat model here and every time we use this chat model we are charging our api so we're saving uh, two, three, sometimes four calls uh, to this chat model by using the MCP server instead of the agent here. Now, that is not all the benefit that we get from using MC MCP servers. Uh, I'm gonna show you a thing that, uh, or a template that I've set up that will give you access to these and make it super easy and save you from manually setting these up every time. So every time you need a gmail uh, mcp server you'd have to come over here and manually set it up at least just the first time that you use it 
and then you can save it and come back to it. But what we can do is we can save ourselves from the effort of creating these individually and we can kind of use a combined template that looks like this. So similar to the GitHub page with a list of all these servers, you can simply download this template, import it into your NADN, and then we can come over here. So if you need access to your Gmail to, or a, if you need your Gmail tools, you can just click on this, copy the production URL, and the only thing you have to do is connect your Gmail account. So you connect your Gmail account one time, and then from now on, all you have to do is just come over here and copy the URL, and you can use that inside of a workflow. So if I wanted to give this agent access to Gmail, I come over to the server here, open it up, copy that URL, and then I can paste that in here. And now this agent has access to all of these tools that are attached to the MCP server here. Now, the idea behind this is that you can have multiple people download this template, add whatever MCP servers they want to this template, and then you can come in and use anything that you'd like. So you can kind of scroll through, figure out what you want, and let's say I want the Google Calendar, I just copy this production URL, go over and add another MCP client, paste in that URL here, and it now has access to my Google Calendar. Now, you might be thinking, why do I need all of these? I might not be using all of them. And things like this prevent us from turning the workflow to active. So you can see there's a problem because I don't have a Slack account connected. Now, that is why I left spacing down here so you can kind of highlight all of these uh, different servers here and just deactivate them. So what I just did was I highlighted all of these nodes that I'm not actually logged into that are giving me an error and I can just double click and then say deactivate the 10 nodes and you can see I can now activate this workflow here and use any of these other servers that I have actually connected to. So this allows us to pretty much create a list of MCP servers just like this GitHub page has allowed us to do on the self-hosted version. So we can do the same thing on the cloud version just using a downloadable template for NADN. So you're more than welcome to download this template and use any of these servers that I've connected here. All you have to do is log in. Some of these you will have to use sub workflows which I've mentioned kind of in the bottom text there. Now, what these also allow us to do is let's say I don't want to use all of these uh, tools here. So here I connected my Gmail to this other workflow. We can open up this and we can select the tools that we actually want. So you can see it says tools to include. It automatically is set to all. So we can say selected or we can say all accept. So I want all accept maybe mark is red. You can add that to the list. Maybe I don't want to delete drafts. So you can kind of go through and select the ones that you actually want to use. So when you're creating this, I added basically everything that you could think to use. And then you can just go through and exclude some, just use specific ones later on when you're actually impl implementing and using these MCP servers. So I'll have this linked below inside of a Google folder here. So this will be a shared folder and I'll allow you to download this template. You can edit it, add different MCP servers to it if you'd like. Uh, you can add, I added a contributor section here, kind of like this GitHub, uh, GitHub page does. And then a readme as well, just kind of explaining what I'm trying to do here. And so if you want to add any servers to this, you can. So download the template. You can add MCP servers to it and then re-upload it here for other people to then build off of as well. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, 
And if you have any questions, drop a comment below. And yeah, that's all I have for you today. Have a good one.